Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video on really a seismic announcement in the data engineering space, which was the release of DBT Fusion and the big DBT conference last week. Um, and DBT had a lot of things to announce. Number one, the deprecation of DBT Core and DBT Cloud. And now there's just one DBT engine which is going to be powered by the DBT Fusion engine. So previous iterations of DBT Core, that essentially is going to become a stale product. There's not going to be any updates to it. Uh, any bugs are committed to being fixed by the DBT team. But DBT Core as a supported offering and a support open source offering is essentially gone by the way of the Dodo. So it no longer exists. Um, and in its place, we now have this new DBT Fusion engine, which is kind of open source but not commercially so. So essentially what DBT has done here is said, hey, you know, all those products that use DBT Core as a part of their product for free um, and don't pay us any money, now, if they want to keep doing that, either they can use DBT Core, which is, you know, an old, now will become essentially a legacy product because it's no longer going to be supported by DBT. So a lot of large organizations are going to be forced to move away from it just because they're not allowed to use those types of products. Um, and now, if you want to use DBT Fusion in your product, uh, if you're a single user, you know, just using it on your, by yourself, that's still okay. But if you're any kind of larger organization, you will now need to sign an agreement with DBT to actually really use the D DBT Fusion engine for commercial purposes. Um, so really big change in DBT's commercial model, you know, instead of kind of having the classic, hey, you know, here's our free open source offering and here's our more managed cloud offering. Now they're really pushing you to use DBT Fusion um, and essentially pushing everyone off of DBT Core and forcing them into some kind of commercial agreement with DBT. Um, so, you know, for better or worse, it's unavoidable. You're probably going to need to learn, you know, kind of the essential or what's happening with DBT Fusion. And that's what we're going to explore in this video is talking about first, hey, what are the big changes, you know, what are the benefits you're getting for DBT Fusion? Uh, and then go into some of the other announcements that DBT has announced and kind of their new paradigm shift in how they're running their company. Um, so if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, join, consider joining my Patreon for early access. But before, above all else, let's enjoy this video and let's get into it. So the first major change and big benefit, honestly, of DBT Fusion is that you now have much faster performance because DBT Fusion is essentially a complete rewrite of the DBT engine now built from the ground up in Rust. So instead of the previous Python-based DBT core engine, Fusion is actually written in Rust, um, and that has allowed it to deliver lightning fast performance, you know, up to 30 times better parsing speeds, significantly faster compilation times um, because of that Rust architecture. Uh, and it also has na native built-in SQL comprehension and state-aware orchestration. Um, so it's going to be able to understand and auto-complete your SQL code, so effectively acting as almost a co-pilot for writing DBT code, um, and help you to enable you know kind of real-time error detection and get intelligent code assistance to widen the aperture of people that are actually able to use DBT effectively. Um, and then you're also going to have things like state-aware uh, orchestration, where Fusion will now track data lineage and model states to avoid unnecessary model runs and optimize compute costs itself. Um, so you actually have built-in efficiencies within uh, DBT Fusion, um, and so all of this means that you know, you're able to handle much larger projects, up to 10,000 models efficiency efficiently. Um, also, those lower compilation times means less compute time spent compiling and not actually running your DBT jobs, um, and giving you real-time feedback into, hey, issues or issues with model name or refactoring um, because of those lightning fast parse times. Um, and then that SQL comprehension, you know, as I just discussed, allows you to detect real-time errors as you're typing it give you those auto completion capabilities um, and just generally make it a lot easier and a lot more efficient to write your DBT jobs. Um, and then you also have much better state aware orchestration um, where you now have things like selected model runs where you can execute only model runs that are affected by upstream data changes, column level lineage tracking where you can understand data dependencies at a granular level. Um, and then as I talked about before, you're performing things like cost optimizations, um, reducing that unnecessary computation, saving data warehouse expenses again, all built into the DBT Fusion engine. So you have a lot more inbuilt optimization than you might have previously had running DBT Core on yourself, which you know obviously you can optimize yourself, but do you wanna make that investment? There's also two new compilation modes coming in DBT Fusion. Um, first is ahead of time compilation, which is gonna be the default compilation strategy where all models are compiled before execution, which helps to ensure correctness and also consistent performance. 
Um, but then there's also now the new option for DB, or for which was the previous behavior of DBT core, which is just in time uh, compilation mode, which is used for models with dynamic templating that require real time information. So when the model might not be complete before it actually is run because it requires you know some upstream information being passed to it, uh, Fusion will actually switch between those automatically now on a per model basis. Um, and then also, Fusion will also be performing static analysis of dbt code um, of within so you can see here so your status analysis config now um, and it'll analyze your dbt code to actually validate sql dialects so making sure you have compatibility with target databases so you know you don't accidentally use postgresql on a snowflake database um, and also extracting column level lineage um, in, in providing those detailed insights into the data transformations and how columns might be changing from a given dbt model um, you also you can use this for enhanced error detection as well um, to help identify you know any kind of errors before execution actually happens through the analysis of your dbt code from dbt fusion um, and for now if you want to run dbt on your own on your local machine what you can do is just you know open up a, you know your preferred code editor um, and then start using it by going into, you know, whether you're on, uh, if you're on Linux, it's going, or Mac, it's just going to be a simple curl command um, where we're just going to pull that from a public uh, dbt get repository um, and just running the dbt fusion engine here. So really easy install. Um, and then you also can use the dbt vs code extension. Um, so actually if I go over here and go into, so if you're using uh, the VS Code, um, you can get the new DBT Fusion extension, which, let's see if it's here. Um, okay, doesn't look like it's out yet, but there will be a VS Code extension for DBT as well, for DBT Fusion as well. But luckily, there actually is a video of the DBT VS Code extension on the DBT Launch Showcase uh, article, which I also want to discuss. So in this article, there's actually a lot of kind of new features, but also really just kind of a new stance from DBT. Uh, first thing is that there's no more kind of two products or distinction between dbt cloud or dbt uh, core and this is also talking about kind of the licensing dispute i was referring to as or not let dispute the licensing change i was talking about as well now there's just dbt um, so if you're using dbt you're using dbt not dbt core dbt cloud you're going to be using dbt fusion uh, if you're not running dbt core on your own and you know that kind of like i talked about legacy version um, so that's you know one big thing is hey they're really trying to stop free usage essentially of their products in commercial use cases. Um, you also now have a DBT MCP server, um, and essentially what this is going to be is it's called a model context protocol server that will provide a standard framework that allows you to integrate kind of AI applications with your data warehouses. So places store AI models, metrics, tests, and lineage. Um, so you can integrate that with the processes that are actually generating the data potentially for that those ML models. Um, and this was really you know, just meant to be serving kind of a bridge between, hey, DBT data and your actual you know, machine learning models that's processing that data and using that data for real use cases. Um, and then there's also, like I talked about, new VS Code extension for DBT Fusion. Um, and so that's where that, those auto completion factors, refactoring, um, and you know that's where a lot of those features that I talked about in DBT Fusion are actually gonna be coming from because you need to have it installed within your code editor for it to do auto complete and for it to sense what kind of what things you're writing. Um, you also have DBT Canvas now, which is kind of meant to be like an AI powered editing framework within a DBT. So I guess not DBT Cloud, but just you know, running DBT online. Um, and so there you're going to have the ability to you know, basically say, hey, I want to run this job um, and use Copilot to actually, you know, or I want to join these two tables. Copilot, write me some code that's gonna do that efficiently. Boom, it's going to do that and then generate the model for you. Um, so seeing pretty much every product out there generate or use generative AI within their product, this is no different using generative AI to kind of power the creation of new DBT jobs and DBT models. So again, lowering the barrier to entry and democratizing that data. Um, and it also you know, has that context of DBT exclusive there, right? And then in parallel with kind of, hey, we're moving more into the data catalog space, more lineage, there's now a DBT T insights uh, tab where you can actually use this to you know, understand insights around your data, what the specific queries are doing. You know, hey, it's great that I can write queries with AI, but I also need to understand what those queries are doing. This helps with that as well. Um, and just, you know, helping you to quickly validate, understand what's going on within a given environment. Um, and again, DBT catalog is now um, expanded as well um, to you know kind of building this out and bringing in again more places to store the data that lineage data um, so really kind of 
becoming, you know, more of a data catalog rather than just a data transformation tool. So you have catalogs, all those transformations, and you don't need to go out and buy another catalog. That's really their play here is, hey, we want to bring everything here, build that kind of platform um, for your data. So that's all the big releases that I think were, you know, super impactful within this. Uh, you know, there are a lot of other kind of small naming things and, and other features, but these were the big kind of headline grabbers. So I hope you enjoy this video. Hope you learned something from it. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.